Welcome back. This is the Saturday edition of the South African Morning. I'm Gareth Edwards. South Africa's constitution has on many occasions been lauded as one of the best in the world. Today mark 25 years since it was adopted. Professor Tuli Maronsela was one of the people who was instrumental in drafting what is known as the highest law of the land. She joins us now from a beautiful Stellenbosch. Good morning to you, Professor. Always a pleasure speaking to you. And as we cast our minds back 25 years ago uh, to the Constitution, you part of the wording, the minutia, the granular uh, phrasing of the Constitution that we all uh, abide by these days. Uh, but, Prof, do you think uh, the Constitution is being played out uh, in real-world terms the way you envisioned it? Good morning, Gareth, and to the viewers. I do think that we've done some good things with our great Constitution. I also do think that we've not harnessed its full potential. And as, as a result, we've become the most unequal society in the world. Our Gini coefficient keeps rising. Unemployment keeps growing and poverty keeps growing. But still, today is better than yesterday. So what... what do you think is the one part of the Constitution, considering everything you've just described, and there are many good things about the Constitution, obviously, Professor, but of the, some of the issues uh, you just raised now, uh, where do you think we can begin to change one key aspect for you? I think you mentioned unemployment, and considering COVID-19, let's pick up on that one if we can. How does the Constitution help someone who's unemployed in South Africa these days? To help the unemployed people, we need to take a moonshot view of our journey towards the country envisaged in the Constitution. When you're asking, what have we done wrong? We have failed to be purpose-driven. How many times have you heard leaders in this country mention the three goals in the preamble? The goal of creating a country that is based on democratic values, the goal of being based on social justice, and the goal of being based on fundamental human rights. So if our leaders were to always ask that question, for example, when they were passing BE laws, they should have asked the first question, will this make us a more equal society? But more fundamentally, who of the 60 million people will benefit. And of the ones who are not going to benefit, what's our strategy for them? And I think we have therefore been transactional sometimes in doing things. Good intentions. So if there's anything we're going to change, it's not going to be the Constitution. It's going to be if we're going to draft a law or a regulation on COVID-19, let's ask ourselves, how will it impact on our goal of becoming mm. a country based on social justice? Mm. And of the 60 million people who will be affected by this regulation, who will benefit mostly and who will be disadvantaged mostly? Is that what we want? If that's not what we want, is there a better way of regulating this? If there isn't, what will be our compensation strategy? For example, one of the compensation strategies, even though they came late, but it came, it was the, the grant, the 350 rand. It's very little, but it is a compensation strategy. Hence, we've asked government to continue it. I want to pick up on that. So I was so glad, Prof, that uh, you, you led me to the, uh, the 350 rand, the, the grant for COVID-19 each month. That has now come to an end, as we know. It was beginning of this month. Uh, and it's made such a difference to people uh, around the country. And, and the Constitution protects very basic rights. And it's been, it's been uh, stopped due to a lack of budget, due to a lack of money in the country. So I suppose what I'm asking, Prof, is have we defaulted due to a lack of money? Have we defaulted on our Constitution in South Africa? I agree with you, Gareth. We have defaulted. I think it was the Daily Maverick 
that came up with that idea. That when we say you, you, you've defaulted, we mean you have failed to meet your obligations. I addressed a conference recently and I said, there's a difference between um, uh, duty and compassion. Compassion is a good thing, but duty is everything. And when we implement our constitution, we, it must be duty first. And therefore, Section 237 says we must put the constitution first. If we say we don't have money, how come we have money for things that are not in the constitution? We're going to build a city in Joburg, and of course there's money that's already being laid out for that city. What part of the constitutional duty um, asks us to build a smart city? Prof, I'm going to say thank you very much indeed. You and I can speak uh, all day, but I think we've, we've raised just some of the bigger issues uh, around uh, the Constitution. And, and I think many South Africans would want to thank you and all those who put the Constitution together, despite all the issues uh, we are fighting uh, against today. At least the Constitution is there uh, to anchor us in some way. And yes, you're 100% correct. It was the Daily Maverick. Uh, it was Mark Haywood, in fact, who said uh, that uh, we have defaulted on the Constitution. As always, uh, Professor Tuli Manoncela joining us uh, here on ENCA. My thanks to you.